This is a short introduction to Freeman's hypothesis for school students. We have solved a lot of AMC and Math Olympiad problems in our YouTube video lessons. And in all of these problems, we were looking for some key fact or pattern or property. And once that idea was found, finishing the problem was relatively simple. The Riemann's hypothesis, which is probably the most famous and important unsolved problem in mathematics, may not be different from that, but this key fact or property has not been found yet. The Riemann's hypothesis has thus far resisted all attempts to prove it. The person who will prove it will get the money prize, one million dollars, that is announced for this proof. This is one of the six remaining so-called millennium problems. In a nutshell, this problem is about the certain function called Riemann's zeta function, which is defined in the entire complex plane and has complex values. The argument of this function is traditionally denoted by two letters, sigma, its real part, and t, its imaginary part. The mystery exists in the vertical strip called critical strip, where sigma is strictly greater than zero and strictly less than one. The hypothesis of Dr. Riemann was that all the roots of the equation zeta of s equals zero in this strip lie on the vertical line that is in the middle, where sigma equals 0.5. It's been proven that there is infinity of zeros or roots of this equation that all lie on this line, and they consist of the conjugate pairs. The first two of such pairs are shown at the bottom of this diagram. I have developed the application program for smartphones that have Android operating system. This phone app is a calculator that allows you to calculate the values of Riemann's zeta function and its associated eta function. You can search for it in Google's Play Store by application name You Advance in Life Math or by description Riemann's function calculator. You can use it to study the behavior of Riemann's zeta and the associated eta function for any positive value of sigma and any value of t. You should know that computer computations have already proved that for all values of t less than 2.4 trillion, the roots of zeta function lie only on the critical line which doesn't mean at all that there isn't some value of t and sigma within the critical strip that is not equal to 0 0.5, for which zeta function is equal to 0. It's worth mentioning that for disproving Riemann's hypothesis by using computer computations, the prize money, $1 million, is not paid. So if you manage to disprove Riemann's hypothesis, you will get the worldwide recognition, but no prize money. Well, you may get some money in the form of a college scholarship. But most importantly, this introduction may help you to feel that math is the living, breathing science in which not everything is known. So what is the Riemann's zeta function? A big part of calculus deals with representing functions not in the form that we're used to, like exponential, logarithmic, or trigonometric, but as the sum of an infinite series. And it was discovered long time ago the close relationship between functions with nice behavior, called analytic functions, and the infinite series. The Riemann's zeta function is initially defined as the sum of the infinite series shown on the diagram. If we write this infinite series with parameter s as the real number 1, then we'll have the well-known so-called harmonic series. It's not too difficult to prove that this simple infinite series diverges to infinity. In other words, 
if we take any large number n and count the partial sums of this harmonic series, then sooner or later that sum will become greater than number n. And it's obvious that if we fix this real number s to any number less than 1, but greater than 0, then the sum of this infinite series will also diverge to infinity. Which means that Riemann's zeta function defined this way is not even defined in the critical strip, where real number s is greater than 0 and less than 1. However, if s is any real number greater than 1, then this series converges to a finite number. This is the well-known fact. Let's briefly review the history of studying this function. First, Euler studied this function in the 18th century with argument s being a natural exponent k and achieved some famous and wonderful results that we will see later. Then, in 19th century, Chebyshev expanded the definition of this function with s being real numbers. We know that the power with real irrational exponent is defined as the limit of a sequence of powers with rational exponents when the exponent approaches the real irrational number. Then Riemann, in 1859, expanded the definition of this function to argument being a complex number. In this case, n to power s, where n is a natural number and s is a complex number, must be computed using Euler's formula for a complex number, which gives an interesting result. We see that the power where exponent is complex number sigma plus it has modulus that depends only on the real part of the argument sigma. Or simply speaking, n to power sigma equals modulus of any n to power s in which the real part of complex number s equals sigma. This implies that when sigma is greater than 1, zeta infinite series converges to a finite number because the infinite series of the moduli of its members converges to a finite number. Thus, the complex valued zeta function is defined as two real valued functions, the real part of zeta and imaginary part. Each of these two functions is the sum of its own separate infinite series. The next possible step in extending the definition of Riemann zeta function to the entire complex plane is adding to its domain the critical strip where sigma is greater than 0 and less than 1 and the vertical line where sigma is equal to 1. This process is called analytic continuation. A common technique for that is to use a different infinite series somehow associated with the original function and use it as a sidekick to continue the definition of the original function in uh, a new area. One of sidekick series for the Riemann zeta function is the Dirichlet eta function which is defined as the infinite series called alternating zeta function. It's been proven that eta function converges to a finite number everywhere to the east of t-axis, where sigma is strictly greater than zero. Besides, there is the simple proportional identity between the values of zeta and eta functions shown on this diagram. There is elementary proof of this identity. This identity holds for all complex numbers s whose sigma is strictly greater than 1. And this identity is used as the definition of the zeta function for all complex numbers whose sigma is greater than 0 and less than or equal to 1. This is what my phone application uses. It computes the partial sum of eta function series and then divides it by the complex number in the denominator of this identity. In this short introduction, 
we will not discuss the analytic continuation of the Riemann zeta function into the area where sigma is less than or equal to zero, since it doesn't at least directly relate to the Riemann's hypothesis. But it's a well-established fact that within the critical strip, that is the only area that matters for the Riemann's hypothesis, both eta and zeta functions converge to finite numbers that are perfectly defined for both functions. It's interesting to examine what's going on on the vertical line where sigma is equal to 1. Again, eta function is perfectly defined everywhere on that line, as it is everywhere to the right of the t-axis. There is an infinity of arguments on that line where eta function obtains zero value. And due to the Euler representation of complex numbers, the denominator in the right-hand side of the identity is also equal to zero in the same arguments. If you enter in the Riemann zeta calculator value 1 for sigma and value 9.0647 for the t, you will see that the modulus of eta function is very close to zero, while the value of zeta function is some complex number that's not close to zero, since it's the result of dividing zero by zero, so to speak. The less interesting case is when the argument s equals to real number 1. This is the only value of s in the entire complex plane where Riemann zeta function is not defined. Its value is infinity. That's why this argument is called the pole. If you enter sigma equals 1 and t equals 0 in the calculator, you will see the value of zeta function shown as nan, which means infinity. But for the eta function, you will see the value 0 0.69315. This is the approximate decimal number for natural logarithm of 2, which is the value of eta function at 1. The first equality shown on this diagram is the formula for the function natural logarithm of x plus 1 equals this alternating infinite polynomial series. This identity holds for the interval between minus 1 exclusive and plus 1 inclusive. If we plug in value 1 for the x, we will get natural logarithm of 2 equals the alternating harmonic series. It's the same series that we get for the eta function if we plug in value 1 for the argument z, which proves that eta function of 1 equals natural logarithm of 2. We can write two infinite series for the real and imaginary parts of eta function as is shown on the diagram. This is how my Riemann function calculator actually computes eta function. On each step, it computes the difference between two consecutive members, the odd one and the even one. In any convergent infinite series, we can group the members in any desired way, as long as we don't rearrange them in the sequence. You can experiment with the number of iterations in the calculator to see how quickly this series converges to its actual sum. The default for this field is 10,000. I can propose to you one of many possible reformulations of Riemann's hypothesis. First of all, we have seen that all the zeros of eta function in the critical strip are also zeros of zeta function and vice versa. And for any zero of eta function, both real and imaginary part of eta function must be equal to zero. Now, if we add up all corresponding members of these two convergent series, and the sum of the resulting series will be the sum of the real and imaginary part of eta function, which must be also equal to zero. We can use the trigonometric identity for cosine minus sine of x in the resulting expression for each member of the resulting series, and we'll obtain 
one real valued function that we can use in the reformulation of Riemann's hypothesis, which will be stated like this. This function has zeros in the critical strip, only on the critical line. This function, the sum of the real and imaginary parts of eta function, is one of the output fields in the Riemann's function calculator. Another important well-known property of zeta function is the so-called functional equation. Zeta function of any argument s is some expression multiplied by zeta function of 1 minus s. This expression is part of the analytic continuation of Riemann zeta function into the entire complex plane. We cannot go into details of it in this short introduction, but it suffices to say that this expression a is not equal to zero within the critical strip. One more property that follows almost immediately from the definition of zeta function is that zeta function of an argument conjugate to s is conjugate to zeta function of s. It implies that any zero of zeta function within the critical strip comes as one of four numbers that form a rectangular quadruple symmetric with respect to the critical line and to sigma axis. From this it follows that it's sufficient for the proof of Riemann's hypothesis to prove the absence of zeros of zeta function either to the left of the critical line or to the right of it, since the absence of zeros in any of these two parts guarantees the absence in the other part. Here is another idea. You can experiment with the Riemann's function calculator and observe that the modulus of zeta function in any argument in the left part of the critical strip is greater than the modulus of zeta function at the point symmetric to the first argument over the critical line. This inequality seems to hold for all t greater than 8, which is not a problem up to 2.4 trillion of absolute value of t. Another inequality seems to be true in the same area of critical strip. Modulus of zeta function of 0 0.5 minus sigma is strictly greater than modulus of zeta function of 0 0.5 for the same value of t. Since modulus cannot be negative by definition, any of these inequalities proves the absence of zeros of zeta function to the left of critical line which in turn proves the absence of zeros of zeta function on both sides of the critical line inside the critical strip. There are three more slides in this video that you can study on your own. This concludes this introduction to the Riemann's hypothesis and Riemann's zeta function. Of course, there is much more theory and many more associated functions that may or may not help to solve the Riemann's conjecture. But at least it's a good start toward understanding this problem.